So we know what the red flags are, and we understand why people ignore them. What can we do to become better critical thinkers, and to help other people do the same? Number one, act locally. The first thing you can do is to start actively looking for the red flags. Keep your eyes and ears open for claims of ancient Chinese wisdom, the body's energy fields, all natural ingredients, pictures of people in lab coats, and television shows that uncritically presume the existence of ghosts or psychic powers. And then question it, research it, go online and do a search. But beware of your sources. A Google search for virtually any pseudoscience is likely to bring up sites that are commercially dedicated to promoting some product or concept, and you're not going to find criticism there. Wikipedia articles about controversial topics always have a section on criticism or skepticism. Follow those links. Read the references on the bottom of the page. Your friend recommends acupuncture or thinks aliens landed in Roswell in 1947. Go and actively search. For scholarly criticism, then make an informed decision. Number two, act globally. Take a stand when your community considers the question: Should education and the media be balanced? Isn't it fair and better to show both sides? Aren't free speech and academic freedom of paramount importance? Well, that depends. In matters of opinion or philosophy, where academic freedom applies, yes. In matters of science, absolutely not. Math class does not give equal time to two plus two equals five. Geology class does not give equal time to flat Earth theories. Medical school does not give equal time to bloodletting. History class does not give equal time to Holocaust denial. Pseudoscience should never be given equal time, and that's not being biased or closed-minded. Facts and fallacies are not equally valid. Embrace the information that stands up to the scrutiny of testing, not the information that fails such scrutiny. You want to make a difference globally? Do whatever you can to end this politically correct fad of giving pseudoscience equal time. Next time your TV show or newspaper presents fallacy as fact, let them know that you don't support the harm they're doing. Next time your local school board wants to replace science with opinion. Help put an end to the folly of balanced science. It might be very politically correct to want to accommodate that five, but I'm sorry. The question on the board is two plus two. There's one final present I'd like to leave you with, and that's a reading list. Like any list, it's woefully incomplete, but I'm going to give you what I consider the best books to get anyone started on the path to critical thinking. First off. Everyone in the world should read Carl Sagan's classic, *The Demon Haunted World: Science as a Candle in the Dark*. This book is the magnum opus of critical thinking for everyone. It's easy to read, approachable, and every page is fascinating, no matter who you are. Chapter 12 includes Sagan's famous baloney detection kit, quite possibly the handiest Swiss Army knife for understanding our universe. The second book. Is Flim Flam by James the Amazing Randy. Randy makes no effort to be everyone's favorite guy like Carl Sagan. Instead, he hits the nail on the head hard. This book is chock full of no-nonsense exposure of frauds and ripoffs. You'll learn how easily people can be deceived, and it can be a big wake-up call. If you want to be able to recognize when someone's taking advantage of you with a fraudulent product or service, expertise in the art of flim flam is your first line of defense. Third, I'm going to recommend a book you probably didn't expect: Mark Twain's *The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn*. Mark Twain was perhaps the most effective critic of human ignorance and folly who ever lived. Although on its surface it appears to be an adventure story, it's really a collection of quite shocking exposés of human weaknesses, driven by superstition, racism, greed, and ignorance. If you think James Randi pulls no punches, try rereading Mark Twain with new eyes. Finally, I'm going to recommend my own book, *Skeptoid: Critical Analysis of Pop Phenomena*, with a foreword by James Randi. This is 50 short subjects based on my podcast episodes, quick and easy analyses of 50 phenomena that you've always wondered about: the Amityville Horror, the Philadelphia Experiment, 
Organic food myths, Bigfoot, spirit orbs. There's something in here to challenge everyone. Some people criticize science by pointing out that it does not know everything and doesn't have all the answers. Obviously, this criticism is true. Science is all about the fact that we don't know everything. Science is the learning process. If we want to improve the world, improve the human condition, improve technology, learning, and thus science, is the essential way forward. When you hear someone criticize science because it doesn't have all the answers, don't argue with them. Instead, point out that that's the central strength of science. We couldn't be learning more every day if we presumed to already know everything. Some people criticize skepticism because it doesn't leave well enough alone. Many paranormal and alternative beliefs bring comfort to those who practice them and are a positive force in many people's lives. But happiness and enlightenment are all around us in our world. You don't have to turn to pseudoscience to find them. And moreover, once we begin investing our faith in unsubstantiated or supernatural phenomena, we are contributing to the redirection of attention, influence, and funding away from technologies and concepts that have been evidenced to be beneficial to humanity and to our world. The choice between pseudoscience and science is the choice between stagnation and progress. Progress toward long life, health, happiness, a cleaner planet, bountiful food, knowledge, and peace. There may indeed be undiscovered dragons in our world, but there's also something we know for a fact. We haven't found any dragons yet. We've looked in a lot of places and seen some extraordinary things, but never yet has science been forced to throw in the towel and admit the reality of magic. <laughs>